and welcome back. Today, we're looking at more guitar arranging tips in which we're also, of course, looking at sound tips uh, uh, using the Blackstar sent James plugin. Thank you, Blackstar. They don't know they're sponsoring this video, but they are because uh, they sponsored one and this is the second one. So I guess we're you know, doing the same thing. And we're looking at really inexpensive equipment. I'm using this headless guitar because literally it just fits nicely into the frame without the uh, head and that's about 400 bucks on Amazon. And we're using the St. James plugin, which has two amps, uh, more low gainy thing, high gainy thing. It's got a couple of uh, uh, pedals. And other than an octopus, which I need, um, it has everything that you need. And uh, with the octopus in front of the uh, audio interface, it works just like an amp, absolutely uh, easy. So what we're doing today is we're looking at how to make a chorus big, how to give it size, how to elevate the track to just explode. And you would think probably to Im implement techniques or sound or volume mixing things to get this happening. But it's not really what you need. G gain isn't the answer. D drop guitars aren't necessarily the answer. This is, of course, not a metal song. But Let's, let's go into this. My arranging teacher taught us this. There are certain ways to create contrast in an arrangement. Now, in the verse, if you've seen the first video or the worst video, um, there's, let's see, was that funny? No. No? Okay, apparently not. Toman is so, uh, triggered by me using sweet water cups that now they're sending 12 Toman cups. So be prepared to have Toman cups on the videos. The verse is implementing roots. So really not wide chords. Roots in the rhythm guitar. And then clean, layered, very simple single note parts. So we really do not have a lot of complex harmony. Yes, there are thirds going in, but each chord itself isn't really big. Now... In an arrangement, and this goes for talking about orchestra, talking about a band, in general, there are certain ways to all of a sudden make an arrangement bigger or to create contrast. You can create contrast with quiet and loud. In quiet and loud, volume is the difference. In a mix, volume is tough to do because in the end it's going to be compressed. So actual volume, real volume in the room is difficult to actually do in a production. There's of course perceived volume. Then there is spread in terms of notes. If you're always, I'm in the middle here. Okay, good. If you're always kind of like in the middle here, All of a sudden, you go lower and higher. So you have a wider spread. Right now I've got, I don't know, three, four octaves. And here you have a fifth. So you're going from this much to this much. So if you looked at it at a sta on a staff, on a music staff, you're going much wider when it comes to your note range. And that is something we definitely implemented in the verse already by going but we also did that uh and then we did so we're really going from there to here we already have a lot of widity and then we're talking about harmonic complexity if it's pretty simple all the time, you can all of a sudden make it harmonically more complex. So you could add the fifth and the third all of a sudden. And you add another octave on it. Maybe a nine. So all of a sudden, instead of a very simple, a pure interval, I've spread and I've added harmonic complexity. And if you're adding harmonic complexity, you're adding volume from a PP to an FF. Or pianissimo to a something forte. What do I know? I only studied the shit. 
and then you're adding note spread so from lower to higher notes and yet you're doing this you're filling it up and you're making it louder all of a sudden you've got this big reveal for a chorus and interestingly in arranging we never talk about timbre and we should a flute is a very pure tone almost uh sine wave like it's, it's, it's a very narrow range of frequencies without a lot of overtones. A guitar tone is very pure. Now, if you add distortion, it adds overtones, and actually these, these single notes are played are taking up more space in the frequency spectrum. So therefore, they're actually more dense, and you could literally just increase the gain and create density and more, moreness. In an orchestral arrangement, you would do that by going from flutes, which are very pure, to violins, which add quite a bit of um, overtones. Uh, reed instruments are very dense. So, but we, we actually never talked about density and adding density within an arrangement or within a production uh, by implementing different tones or timbres. We're going to do that here. The chorus is E, A, E. That's pretty much what it is. Um, and you could go and say, well, I'm just going to crank up the gain like crazy. Let's, let's do this for shits and giggles. Voice to... Yeah, you could do that. I don't think it's going to make it big. It's going to make it more brutal. It's going to make it more aggressive. But that is one octave. We need a, we need a lot more. So I'm going actually back here. And we're actually going wide. I'm going to play you the final result and then I'm going to show you how to put it together. And we're going to actually start in the pre-chorus, which we already had in the previous video, but we didn't talk about those power chord guitars coming in. So this is where we want to go. And we'll immediately pull it back. Have a little bit of delay on there and a little bit of um, reverb, I think. Let's see. But you can tell this is not a heavy sound. I don't even think I would need the reverb. Usually for rhythm sounds, I wouldn't go for uh, any kind of effects. Maybe, let's see, I don't know. We don't need it. Cap, I'm not gonna touch it because stick with what works. This works, I'm not gonna fiddle with it. You can ruin a lot by fiddling with the caps. Not just on the St. James software, which by the way, now has MIDI in standalone version. You can literally run this on your laptop as a live solution. And then you have MIDI under your feet for the effects and presets and whatever. Uh, Blackstar actually has a MIDI foot switch that I found on Toman for 169 bucks that can help you with that, but uh, they didn't even tell me about that. Um, you can, of course, use any other MIDI foot switch, but this is pretty flexible software given the two amps. So there's 
I mean, do we need boost in this? <sighs> I don't think so. So the part, the original part, was this. So that's an E with a major seven. So it's E major seven. It's a very open E power chord here. No third. Played in a triplet kind of a feel. And then the whole thing with an A in the bass. So we just lift that E, mute that E down here and have the A. Which actually... is... actually an A... A sus 2 to A sus 2 sharp 11. So, A sus 2, A sus 2 sharp 11, technically. So... And it's beautiful from absolute clarity. Power chord to power chord with a major 7 to a more dense chord, sus 2, sus 2 sharp 11, almost very dissonant. So for me, as a producer, it's important to carve out that element that's very important for the production. So... The bass, obviously, is going to do... So the bass is doing the roots. How much do we have to do the roots? The bass is already doing it, so it's not super necessary. So, in order for these notes to come out, less gain is your friend. So, you see, I'm doing big chords. Let's talk about big chords. If you look at the chords in the bridge, it's B, A, B, A. I'm not doing B, A, B, A. I'm actually doing for size, this B power chord, and you put your finger flat, and that gives me a B sus 2. So this will be B major, B major, B minor, B sus 2. And I'm doing nothing other than that. And then A sus 2. And then there's these, these snare sounds, dead, 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 dead. And it's actually, uh, uh, the first chord is only half, so we're really just doing E and A. And then it ends with, So the top line is very important. All this is extremely easy. That is on E, E major, E sus4, E major, E sus2. So to play it smoothly, you would have to fret it like this. So you do the E major, E sus4, E major, E sus2, E major. You can also do this. It's not really sus2 because the third is a little bit in there. But if you play it at that speed... It's clear. So what we're doing is really outlining that. So we're doing these. <gasps> uh, 
Uh, uh. So we're doing this first. Let's mute everything else. Again, we want to go for wide, big. We, we don't need density in tone, meaning we don't need massive gain. So the amp is in channel two, there's no boost in it, and we are at like two o'clock in terms of gain. And if you actually compare, let's do this. I did this earlier. The tone that we got with some kind of tube amp and some kind of guitar, don't ask me. So this is the original tone. It's a little bit denser. Maybe we kick in the boost, let's see. I'm, I'm sure we had some kind of tube screamer in front of some amp. Okay. I mean, that is as close as you can get. I'm using software now versus whatever it was behind me with, ex with pedals and expensive guitars. Really no big difference there. Let's go track this shit, as they say in my hood. And it is fun. I have quite a bit of a lower level here compared to the original, but that's really just output on the Blackstar amp, and I can just pull that up. And what are we doing? If you look at the Asperion something board here, let's look at where the these two guitars are. So you can see on the select up the orange, that's where the two tracks are. And we're going to go to pan. So this is panned all the way to the right and this is panned all the way to the left uh, can you even see that it's electric guitar three and four no oh, they're really panned i mean you can see l and r maybe you can see that and they're definitely way panned hard left and right And what a transition. It's just big, it's loud, the drums are doing cymbals. Here are our two tracks soloed. It's already big. So what is happening here? Really not a lot of gain. And they're just open chords. Let's see. Too, definitely too much. We're going to go less gain here. We're unboosting this. I'm not doing this A. We all know that that C sharp is kind of problem problematic on a guitar. I'm doing this, which is a nice, even bigger open A. Leave the two top strings open, that's actually an um, A add 9. 
and here I'm doing um it's really you know that the good old John Bon Jovi thing it's the same thing for E you just don't have an open string so so now I need to get that nine happening it's not ideal but it's in there so you want to make sure that that theme is supported by as many instruments as possible so that's it let's track that So make sure you're not completely trashing everything in both guitars because you already have a very, very, very busy rhythm in the first one and it would just get blurry and too dense and too rhythmically. You need that you know, in the second one. So this is now guitar number one. I messed up that first chord there, I think. No, that's the, uh, the high note. That's not nice. What the? What happened there? Ah! String got caught under the it's weird, the frets are not sharp there. But it happened both times, so we're fixing that. That's still happening. Yep, that string was caught under... Aw, oh, damn it! That string was caught under that fret the whole time. So you're going to see me really, 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 really fast doing all of that again. Okay. It's weird. It's not sharp up there, but it happened. So that's the guitar we just recorded. Again, fully panned to the left and right. Okay, that's clear because we don't have too much gain. Now we're going to layer that with the other guitar. Beautiful. Let's listen to the ending. A nice unison there. Well, actually in octaves. So let's see what we got here. This is actually a really cool part. Remember that clean part from the very beginning? So this is a very cool part. We're going to set up a sound for it. Going to go clean, channel. What I love about this is it really requires a compressor is in good. Uh, it was, was in the whole time. That's fine. I got no problem with that. All these parts are so ridiculously simple. I can play this with one finger. And so on and then. It's just doubling that, but 
of course, with a dotted eighth delay, quite a bit of it. Oh, I need to turn it on. That's weird. We want a bit more. That's perfect. A little bit more trouble there. Why not? Okay, there's my sound. I'm gonna mute my originals. What do you think we're going to do now? And uh... We're doubling the whole thing in octave. Make your own shimmer. I recorded it on the wrong track, but of course that is no biggie, bam, it is not tape. So move it down and we have a beautiful octavized part. Now that of course is really just that top part Emphasize. So if we put it together with the original part. It did not in any way add notes. It just added widity, you know, spread in terms of uh, the arrangement and it made it a little bit clearer because of course we did two tracks in clean I know I'm not the biggest fuss aficionado but sometimes you need a fuss there's one extra line in there which is this and it blows it up so much I'm gonna kick in an octave first, but I need to do it on the clean here so that that top end really comes out. Actually, that, that sound could be fine because that's a... So this is a Moval Octopus. Dirt cheap. You can, you also know them as Tone City. With this one, the other one kind of went into the, the octave, octave quicker. I, I might do it in octave. Now I'll, I'll keep a single note lines. And you see, I'm tracking everything with delay, with reverb, because later on, I have the confidence to know that it works. And I urge you to work and work and work so that you are tracking with all that stuff and not later get bogged down in endless mixing sessions. Because all I'm doing is levels, really. So that also adds glue because all the other parts stop 
and start the verse part again. Whereas this soaring B sound sits there going into the verse. It's in there and it's subtle, but it's in there. And there you have it. One more time, the whole thing. Remember, all it was was really a There's also this part, I don't know if that's actually in the arrangement, I don't remember, I don't think it is Oh, we didn't use that there So, one more time from the bridge and then we're good So again, it's all about, uh, well me at the moment, but also it's all about carving out the actual melody in the original and doing this and stacking it and bringing that into, into the mix and then Just in an arrangement, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are thinking riff, 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 one guitar part and that's it and that's fine, but you can take that one guitar part and enhance it with a clean, with something that really rocks without any effects, that's the core of your arrangement, and then do it on octave higher with effects and blend that in just like you would your shimmer or any of that. And 
not because I'm friends with them, not because they pay me, but honestly, that Blackstar software, I'm going to have Leslie show you one more time right here. Uh, this Blackstar St. James thing. I mean, everything you need before the amp, a kick ass overdrive, kick ass clean sound and a pretty kick ass, if you ask me, gain sound. I never even did anything with the EQ. I, I don't need to. Never did anything with the car because I don't need to. But I mean, right here. <laughs> Of course, if you want to, you push this uh, with the drive. And change cabs and all that stuff. This is incredibly flexible. It's so dirt cheap. I mean, link below. Right now, there's a sale on it. When you're watching this video in after the sale, then the sale is not there. And it's still an absolute steal. What I love about it is... It gives you a palette of some stuff in front, some stuff after, and a palette of sounds and cabs and all that stuff in the amps where you have everything you need and you're going to make music. You're not going to fiddle around with let's load an IR, let's, uh, let's use that amp, that amp, that amp, that amp. I could do a huge variety of styles with that and it would absolutely work. If I feel up to it, I'm going to do another one of these with some heavy sounds. Don't know. I'll shut this one off now. I hope you had some fun. And um, links below and animals at the end.